Who were the seventh and eighth judges in Israel, and what can we say about their judgeship? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse-by-verse study of the book of Judges on Walking Through the Bible. Today we're going to be discussing Judges 10 verses 1 to 5. Before we do that, let's read the passage. If you have a Bible with you, you can turn to Judges chapter 10 verse 1. But if you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So Judges chapter 10, beginning at verse 1. After Abimelech, there arose to save Israel Tola, the son of Pua, the son of Dodo, a man of Issachar. And he dwelt in Shemir in the mountains of Ephraim. He judged Israel twenty-three years, and he died and was buried in Shemir. After him rose Jer, a Gileadite, and he judged Israel twenty-two years. Now he had thirty sons who rode on thirty donkeys. They also had thirty towns, which are called Haboth Jer, to this day, which are in the land of Gilead. And Jer died and was buried in Camon. Having now completed our look at Abimelech, it is important that we return to our timeline so as to understand where we are in history, for this period of time will be important when considering the rest of the book of Judges. Abimelech came directly after Gideon, who was judge from 1191 to 1144 BC. Abimelech only served as judge and king for three years, meaning that we're now down to about 1141 BC. Chapter 10 begins by telling us that Israel's seventh judge, Tola, the son of Pua, the son of Dodo, came after Abimelech, meaning that we know that Tola didn't judge during the same period as Abimelech. This makes sense, for recall that Abimelech wanted to maintain complete control and so would not have taken kindly to someone else being judge in northern Israel, too. Tola was a man from Issachar and dwelt in Shemir in the mountains of Ephraim. There is much debate as to where Shemir is. Some contend that Shemir is an earlier city of what would become Samaria, although objections to this is that Samaria is located well within the borders of Manasseh. So how would this place be known as to be in the mountains of Ephraim? It should be noted, though, that the mountains of Ephraim seem to have a broader meaning than the geographic boundary allotments, as we saw in Judges 4 verse 5, where the mountains of Ephraim extended down into the territory of Benjamin. This means Samaria, though within the tribal allotment of Manasseh, could still be a possibility. However, there are two other possibilities that place Shemir within the borders of Ephraim, not far from the vicinity of Shechem. These two possibilities are labeled in yellow on your screen now. It is important to us that we, it is not important, sorry, that we know where Shemir is, for it doesn't play an important role in the story. What we do need to know is that Tola judged Israel for 23 years and then died. What nations did Tola save Israel from? We're not told, but at that time, suffice it to say, with Israel going after false gods, various nations from time to time came and harassed Israel. They didn't seem to occupy Israel like the Canaanites did in Deborah's day, nor did they seem to come in and destroy Israel's crops like the Midianites did in Gideon's day. Rather, it appears that nations simply arose that would become a thorn in Israel's side, a punishment by God for Israel's idolatry. With Tola being judged for 23 years, we can firmly bring our timeline down to 1118 BC. Beyond that, we know nothing more about Tola, and so we should move on to verse 3 and look at Jer's judgeship. Like it was with Tola, we're not told much about Jer. We know that Jer was a Gileadite, meaning that he lived east of the Jordan. We know that Jer had 30 sons who rode on 30 donkeys, showing us that Jer's family was quite wealthy and had status in Gilead. The family also had 30 towns which are called Havoth Jer. This would place Jer's residence in the half-tribe of Manasseh, meaning northern Gilead, with the tribe of Gad occupying southern Gilead. An important point to remember when we get to our study of Jephthah. Now, frequent viewers of this podcast might recall back to Numbers and Deuteronomy, where Jer and Havoth Jer are mentioned. And this might lead some to be confused as to what we're talking about here in Judges. Going back to Deuteronomy 3, let's read verses 12 to 14. And this land, which we possessed at that time, from Arar, which is by the river Arnon, and half the mountains of Gilead and its cities, I gave to the Reubenites and to the Gadites. The rest of Gilead and all Bashan, the kingdom of Og, I gave to the half-tribe of Manasseh. All the region of Argob, with all Bashan was called the land of the giants. Jer, the son of Manasseh, took all the region of Argob 
as far as the borders of the Geshurites and the Maacathites, and called Bashan after his own name, Hevalcher, to this day. Now the obvious question from this is, is the passage in Deuteronomy, and also in Numbers, an interpolation in Deuteronomy by a later author who is referring to the Jer we read of here in Judges 10? And, to the, and the answer to that, I believe, is no. I believe this for one important reason. The passage in Numbers 32 and Deuteronomy 3 refers to a Jer that actually went and captured the cities in Bashan and called them Abok Jer. So that Jer lived in Mo so that Jer, sorry, lived in Moses' day. And since Judges 10 says that this Jer followed Tola, who followed Abimelech, who followed Gideon, that precludes this Jer from being the Jer of Numbers 32 and Deuteronomy 3. He would, however, be a relative that simply has the same name. And this makes absolute sense. For though we didn't say earlier, Tola from the tribe of Issachar shared his name with the actual son of Issachar, as found in Genesis 46, verse 13. Why then is it said in Judges 10 that these sons had 30 towns which are called Avalcher to this day, making it seem that the cities were named after Jer's children? Well, what that means is that these sons lived in the towns of their ancestors. Note the passage doesn't say that Jer's children named these cities, just that they had these cities, meaning that they lived there and seemingly ran the towns, towns that their ancestors have helped establish. The difficulty only arises when we read too far into Scripture and assume things that the passage does not say. The last thing we know about Jer is that he judged Israel for 22 years and was buried in Canaan, a place we do not know. This brings our timeline down to 1096 BC. Who Jer fought against during his judgeship were again not told, so it's useless to speculate. With us now entering the 11th century BC, it should be noted that we're now getting into the time period that we'll be covering in the book of 1 Samuel, with many of the events of the first few chapters of that book actually occurring during the days surrounding the judgeship of Jer. That means that the events surrounding Jephthah and Samson actually occur concur concurrently with the beginning of 1 Samuel leading further credence to Samuel being the author of this book of Judges. Having now looked at the judgeship of Jer, we are now ready to begin looking at the events that would lead up to the judgeship of Jephthah, something we will begin to do, the Lord willing, in the next lesson. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Judges chapter 10, verses 6 to 18, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world. Amen.